Hello, welcome to Revelator Al for uh, a Sunday lunchtime, oh, a Harley talk at noon. Uh, so thanks for joining in and uh, well, please join in the chat. And uh, there's uh, super chats available for anybody as well. Uh, so all the proceeds from the super chats will go to charity as well. Uh, so on uh, today's uh, Harley talk at noon, I'm going to be talking about, uh, well, Harley Davidson not actually uh, going to have a presence at the London Motorcycle Show, uh, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. Uh, the new bikes, which I've done reviews on recently uh, for the Fat Boy 30th Anniversary and the CBO Road Glide, so you're going to be asking your thoughts, so let us know in the chat on that. I've been doing a few uh, sort of videos at a couple of dealerships uh, this week, a few Q&A sessions, uh, got some good feedback from that, uh, so I'm going to be discussing that as well. And... Um, also, some other videos of interviewing other uh, just general riders or other YouTubers as well. The Oh My Harley series, uh, updates on that. Uh, I got, uh, and yeah, open up for a Q&A session. Just ask any questions about the soft tails, the sport glides, uh, uh, or anything really. Uh, anything about what I've been doing with the channel or, um, you know, with the speaking to the dealerships and what that means going forward, you know, by, uh, by all means, ask. And if you've got any information or you want to ask any information about the latest uh, Harley news, uh, any issues, faults as well, let us know. That's right. So I've got the chat going here as well. I'm just going to check a few settings. So if anybody's watching, just give us a thumbs up somewhere. So if you can hear me okay, I believe, yeah, I've got a good signal here. And let me just check that. Uh, I've got a good signal there. So. That all works as well, right. So I've got the chat going. That's good. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm gonna kick off this uh, Harley Talk uh, live uh, by talking about the uh, London Motorcycle Show. Uh, now, I'm going next Friday. Uh, coincidentally, I had, had actually uh, arranged an interview uh, with uh, a biker down in the Guildford area, and we were gonna do a, a series of Oh My Harley. Um, but unfortunately, I totally forgot that I double booked myself. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to the London Motorcycle Show. I, I was going to go by myself on my bike uh, because it's just right across the city and uh, then I just free parking at the other end. If you've ever been, it's a great show to go to. Slightly smaller than the uh, Motorcycle Live Show uh, in November. Uh, and also, it's only runs for three days. It's running for Friday, Saturday and Sunday uh, of next weekend. Uh, but it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a good show. It's a good show to go to. Hello, Paul. How are you? How are you? Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. And it, Oh, good. And you can hear me okay. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll be going there a Friday. And uh, now, also, my lad has uh, got one of these inset days. And basically, they get a, a day off school. Uh, so instead of riding over now, we're, actually, I'm going to take him with me. I'm going to go on the train right across the city. It would be a lot easier, actually, that way. So we're actually going to go by train, would you believe? Yeah, and uh, hopefully I can get uh, right there uh, to uh, the XL Centre, and uh, yeah, get in there. Anyway, so uh, but if you are uh, getting there, uh, go bike. Bike parking is free. I'm sure you all know that. Um, now there is uh, an interesting development. Well, I'm not even sure if it's a development. I just don't think it's ever been the case. I was just checking up at the lineup of uh, Motorcycle Live this uh, year, not Motorcycle Live, the London Motorcycle Show by Motorcycle News and Carol Nash who do all that kind of stuff. And uh, they haven't got Harley Davidson there, which I find really, really interesting. They've got Indian, they've got other manufacturers there. In fact, what I'll do, I'll bring up the, the website for you and um, Let's just see if I can show you exactly who's there. Uh, that's it, right, let's bring that, bring that. There we go, okay, so this is the site, uh, London Motorcycle uh, Show, and right at the bottom here, you've got all the manufacturers. It's got AJ, uh, AJS, which are producing a lot of uh, smaller displacement engines, actually, they've come on strong the last couple of years, really good BMW, of course, CCM, I'm a big fan of CCM. Saw my video uh, recently about that. CF Moto, yeah, they're pro providing some good bikes as well. Ducati, of course. Uh, EQ2, like electric motorcycles, electric scooters are always going to be a big thing now. 
uh, at any motorcycle show. Honda, Husqvarna, Kawasaki, you know, the, the usual suspects are going to be at this show, KTM, Mutt Motorcycles, or Mutt Motorcycles, again, I'm a big fan of this uh, manufacturer as well, just like Herald, just like um, CCM, really am a, a big fan of them. Uh, MV Augusta are there with their uh, new incarnation, but look, uh, Indian, uh, Royal Enfield, well they've, they've missed out the L here on them, Enfied, <laughs> Royal Enfield, uh, Suzuki are there, Triumph are there, Yamaha, and of course Zero Motorcycles, who are the electric uh, warriors there. Now, so you know, everybody is there, everybody is there apart from Harley Davidson. Now, Traditionally, the uh, MCN Motorcycle Live show uh, in uh, London was, well, I, I wouldn't say it was, um, it was more about, you know, the bikes, I suppose, that would feature uh, in Motorcycle News, the uh, newspaper. Uh, there's a strong racing uh, hint to it, something, you know, of all sorts. But over the years, over many years it's been running, it has changed and it's become more eclectic really so whilst it's not really custom bike show there is a little bit more of an influence of, of that kind of thing and you're, you're getting you know smaller manufacturers there you're getting you know the likes of Mutt and the CCM but they're at Motorcycle Live as well but you've got Indian there the Indian are there and they're pretty much if you can say like for like with Harley Davidson they're producing similar kind of bikes but they're they're making the effort to go there Harley Davidson are not, are not. York, hello, how are you? How are you? Thank you for joining. Uh, they're not there, so I, you've got to ask why. Now, I did send a message to Harley Davidson, and yet again, they haven't come back to me. Um, perhaps may, maybe they just don't like being asked questions. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but every time I've been answering them, asking them questions recently, or copying them in on tweets and all that kind of stuff that people do these days, uh, they're just not answering. And I've got to ask, you've got to ask why. Why is that? They've missed a big opportunity here, I think. Yeah, whilst, you know, they're expecting, crikey, how many thousands of people here, it still is a major motorcycle show, certainly here in the UK. It still is a great opportunity to get your bikes out, get your names out there. Now, you could argue is that maybe Harley Davidson, as a company, motor company, don't really want to get associated with the motorcycle news crowd or that the, the sporting crowd. Maybe they just don't see themselves as a fit. But as I said, they've already, you know, their competitors, if you like, or okay, a lot smaller competitors, but you know, like Indian, are going there. Guess on Lane, hello guys, how are you? Yeah, good to see you here. A sup people, yes, sup indeed. Uh, with a colon and a big D, slimy face, hello. Um, hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Right, yeah, so I, I, I say I, I think they've missed a trick by not by not going there. And I've you know checked up all the suppliers and there's a whole host of suppliers, there's gonna be lots of stores there, lots of manufacturers of all sorts of shapes and sizes, but Harley Davis are not there, and I really do think they've unless something's gone on in the background, unless they've fallen out with the organizers, I don't know. And as I say, you could argue that because they're majority of their bikes or cruisers that they wouldn't want to be there but they're bringing out the pan america they're bringing out the liquid cooled engines they're bringing out the bronx and this is the perfect show if there was ever a show to showcase your two next bikes this is it this is the london motorcycle show because you're going to get a more eclectic uh, view, uh, view, more uh, of maybe a different market, a different audience that would normally come to uh, motorcycle shows. Um, and uh, may, maybe you get a lot of people who are just in London, they just want to go to a show. It opens up many more doors. And I, I think they've missed a trick here. And I want to show you the, you know, the Pan America here. I mean, look, what does everybody think of the Pan America anyway? I mean, I, I kind of... I, you know, I, let me just bring it up here. I kind of really, I'm starting to really like it. But here's the problem I have. Here's the problem. I have. If you look at these images, you know, you see the image of you know guy riding the adventure bike here and he's jumping over things and getting airborne. 
And look, uh, there's a nice one on some salt flats there, as I suppose. And there's one. He's going up a little ridge line there. Look, look, he's standing up on the pegs there. That's a very adventure bike. Here's the other one. And he's, you know, doing some rooster tails there. All very good. It's all showing the right signals, right? Going through the forest and everything. But look at the trails here. Look at the trail here. This is all flat, hard, compacted stuff. This is pretty much the same kind of terrain that you could ride any bike on, any any bike, any Harley on. It isn't that challenging. And that's the thing with big adventure bikes. As soon as you get into really challenging stuff where the, the terrain isn't flat, hard and compacted, then you have to work really hard. And then, you know, you're most likely to drop the thing or, or crash out. You know, and they haven't released a lot of information. Look, I mean, on the profile, it actually looks really nice. I actually like this profile of the bike. Knobbly tires look work well on it as well. You know, from the look, I mean, it's a bit awkward on gainly in some respects, but other other aspects, I think it's you know really good. You know, so I don't know. I mean, as I say, I I think there was a big opportunity there for uh, Harley to, you know, get get uh, get to the London Motorcycle Show and. and uh, and, uh, you know, show off its wares, I guess, to another thing. I've got to read this out. Always nice to have a day off and listen to your dulcet tones. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> That's very kind. I have to sort of change into a squeaky voice now just to, uh, uh, you know, ch change that, I suppose. <laughs> but thank you very much. Very kind. But, you know, so, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll be still be going as well. I'm, of course, I'll to the, to the bike show, the London Motorcycle Show, as I say. I mean, it's a great show, as I say, that you... you Unlike Motorcycle Live, Motorcycle, London Motorcycle Show, you do tend to get the odd celeb or minor celeb walking around, uh, you know, just minding their own business, doing their own thing. But I've seen quite a few over the years uh, just walking around, whereas I've never seen anybody, unless you, you know, separate that from, uh, you know, people who are known within the motorcycle world. I'm talking about other types of celebs, really, proper celebs, as it were. Um, but you tend to get that at the London Motorcycle Show a little bit more. Uh, anyway, but uh, look, I, I just think they're, they've they missed a trick. I don't know. I'll try to ask some questions that I don't know why. I mean, if anybody knows uh, why, uh, then, uh, you know, let us know, of course. I mean, look, but as I say, get to the, if you can, get to the London Motorcycle Show. I'm going to try and do uh, a vlog around or take get some footage of the um, the bikes and everything to get to show you. Have a little walk around, describe what I'm seeing and everything. Uh, but, I'll, but I'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, but so I'll be, I'm gonna be, I was going to go on the bike. I'm going to go on the, uh, on the train. Uh, but bike parking is free. I think car parking is a bit... It's quite expensive and it's limited parking, so I, I think they're, they're not really too keen on you going in your car if, if that's uh, your your bag. But I think uh, train or uh, bike is probably the best way to go. Uh, right, yeah. So, okay. So the next thing is uh, Harley Davidson news. You know, they've released these two thousand and twenty new mid-season bikes, haven't they? Now you've seen the videos which I've already done about them. It's the thirtieth anniversary. Uh, bike uh, of the uh, Fat Boy and also the CVO Road Glide. If I just quickly bring these up for you as well. Uh, now, do, do you know what? It's here we go. I mean, look at that. Actually, I mean, I I actually think that's quite quite a nice one. Actually, I mean, I like bl black bikes anyway. Give me a black bike, and you know, you've pretty much sold it to me already. You know, I just love a black bike. I'm not so sure that they needed to do it with the fat boy i'm not so keen on the fat boy front end or the, even the road glide front end for that matter in this kind of wrapped around uh, what they call a headlight nacelle the cover around the nacelle i'm you know just it's just not for me but from the side yeah it looks good it looks good definitely but i, I think you know i think in one of their um, one of their statements harley davidson said that they wanted to re release the 30th anniversary bike of the Fat Boy in black because they've been listening to the trends of Harley Davidson riders and owners who are preferring black bikes. Well, so well, if that's the case, why don't you just make a black bike? Well, why don't you make more of your bikes black, all blacked out in terms of engine, you know, uh, exhaust, everything, tank, and everything? 
instead of having this 30 year anniversary which you're paying a premium for a couple, couple of thousand pounds more you know so I mean that begs the question possibly they just need to make more black bikes you know if you're going to have a black bike don't have black accent pieces on it make sure it's black you know all over but anyway I'm not that that's uh, that's the uh, CV sorry that's the uh, that's the 30th anniversary of Fat Boy, and here we've got the CVO Road Glider. I mean, look at this monstrosity. Oh, crikey. Uh, and this is a big old thing. I think it's coming in around about $40,000, uh, is it, or pounds, something like that. No, it's probably more than that in dollars, but pounds. You know, it's, it's, a, big old, it's a big old thing, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure what the actual price is. Let me just have a quick check. I'm not sure if it's saying here. Okay, forty thousand dollars. That's what it was. Forty thousand dollars, which is going to be what thirty odd thousand pounds, something like thirty-two thousand pounds. I don't know. Let us know in the comments below uh, or in the chat what you think that is. Um, but look, you know, it's uh, it's uh, I don't know. It's it's a good looking bike, isn't it? It's a it's a good looking bike. I think. You know, I, th I think you know. I've seen a couple of reviews on it, and it's raving. I and mean, there's a few updates in there. Uh, oh, there's a bit of tech in there. It's still got the 117 engine, I believe. Uh, it's as I say, you know, watch my other video for the the basic uh, review or the update info on it. But I think it's, a, I mean, it's a, it's a nice looking bike. I mean, if if Road Glide is your thing, nice looking bike. I personally prefer the Street Glide. But I say I don't particularly think that the Tourers are my thing. But I, you know, if if I had to have either the Road Glide or the Street Glide. There's, I go for the street glide. Now, interestingly, if you look at uh, my recent videos uh, interviewing the Harley dealerships, they're saying actually there's a big turnaround in the UK in recent months, let's say the last few months, uh, from Tora would be buyers going from the street glide to the road glide. Now, they changed the front end a little bit, more of like a shark like uh, profile and a shark head profile. And it seems to be attracting more riders, you know, with a bit extra technology as well, like RDRS as well. So yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting times uh, for for Harley Davidson there. I think with the um, with this uh, with this bike. I mean, I I'm not so sure. I'm kind of looking at it now. You know, it's, this is mid season, isn't it? Mid season uh, reveal. They're they're going to try and boost sales. We know that the company is uh, struggling. We know that the company is struggling globally. They're on this kind of recovery pathway, which they keep on going on about. But you know, I, you know, I'm sure it will find the market. Anytime you put some kind of limited edition or mid-season uh, variant out, you're always going to get a little boost in sales. People are going to want to levitate to that. Uh, but I think, look, I think it's it, it looks all right. I mean, if, if, if that's your thing, I think it definitely looks good. Um, look, and just getting back to the Fat Boy here. I mean, the Fat Boy I think is a better looking bike out of the two, cause, but I prefer that kind of look anyway, more of a naked look, as it were. And uh, yes, <laughs> well, well, we all like a bit of naked, don't we? I suppose. Here we go, Paul. Uh, Paul, thank you very much. He says thirty-one thousand, yeah, and twenty-five uh, uh, pounds, seventy-nine pence. That's right. Uh, yeah, so it's. Uh, here we go, uh, Hepcat Harley. Hello, how are you? Uh, some Harley dealerships could win prices for the extent of their customer ignorance, but one during well, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I suppose, I suppose. Um, that's Harley Davidson, as we know them, uh, not being there for their customers. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I'm going backwards here when I should be reading. <laughs> Hi, hi, just poking my head uh, in the door. Well, there you go, and, and I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Beans, beans, hello, beans, how are you? Uh, Mr. R.A., loving all the videos. Uh, sir, just joined, so missed the live stream so far. Well, I've got to say, you haven't missed much. Uh, so I've really just talked about, just to give you a quick update, uh, just to talked about that, there's a London motorcycle show happening next weekend, but Harley Davidson aren't there, so I've been trying to explore why they're not there. And um, I think they're missing a trick. Uh, they've obviously we've talked about uh, the new mid-season reveals uh, bikes, whether it's the 30th anniversary Fat Boy and the CVO Road Glide, which they've just released. And I think pretty much uh, that's it. Now, if we get back to the London Motorcycle Show about Harley Davidson, as I said, you know they got the Pan America. They come out. They could have put that out there. 
they could have really highlighted that. Let me just get back to the Pan America here. Let me put that on the screen for you. There we go. Look. And so, as I say, you know, I've already talked about this. They've got the photos, but they haven't got much information on any bike, really. And I know they're probably still finalizing things with it. But all the imagery of the Pan America, it's kind of all safe riding. It's not really taxing. I say most of this stuff, believe me, I come from an adventure riding background, off-road background. Lots of this stuff you could do on a normal bike anyway. Or most of it anyway. It's, you know, it's not really hard and taxing. That's nice. Nice profile of this engine. Looking... Looking at 12, uh, is it 1250, is it? Yeah, 1250, isn't it? Yeah, showing off the Brembo brakes, love all that. And lo loaded up with luggage. That's all, that. this would be perfect for you, Gaston Lane. Lane. Guess Lane, yeah, perfect for you. Uh, a bit of an adventure bike, you know, that's it. Top, top luggage. Yeah, hard luggage for all your cameras and all your traveling around. Probably want something a bit more pokier than this, but I'll tell you what, 1250 liquid cooled engine, you might be surprised. You might be surprised. There we go. Look at that. Not bad. Bit of an, a bit of an odd looking bike, I think, isn't it? But there we go. Look. Uh, here we go. Oh, right. Let me just go back to this. Now, what I wanted to show you was the Bronx. So the Bronx is the kind of the street bike. Uh, and this is the one. Same engine, just the 975 now. They've just reduced the CC capacity. Lots of, uh, you know, images of them riding around on the, in the twisties, in the mountains. You know, a good, fun, little street hooligan bike, right? All good stuff. There we go. And then, oh, I mean, that's a nice picture of that one. I mean, it looks good. You know, sunset, you know. I mean, it looks good. It's very kind of Ducati type uh, uh, kind of styling a little bit. There's, there's accent pieces from lots of different, or influences from lots of different bikes, I think. And again, still got that, uh, the same engine. And it is, let me just check that. It's a 975, yeah, 975cc. Look, I mean, it's good. It's, it's bare bones riding. It's a bit meaty and everything like that. Uh, so I'm sure uh, lots of people will, will love this bike as well. But again, if there was ever a bike to show off at the London Motorcycle Show, this is it. If you want to make a big statement, lead with this bike or lead with a Pan America. Put it out there. Even if you just put the your only two bikes at the show, are going to be these two bikes you just put up a little little tent and you say guess what let's just scrap away all the faff let's just let's just get rid of all the hype uh, all the big uh, stand and we just have two bikes there have the pan america have the that um that bronx there that street fighter there and there you go you say look this is the new face of harley davidson if you want to make an impact, that's what they should have done. Anyway, I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, some people will agree with me, some people won't, but there we go. Uh, but as I say, you know, look, they've, they, we're still waiting on news for these two bikes. I mean, it's just crazy that they haven't released any worthwhile information, I think. You know, images, videos, yeah, it's, all, it's almost like, you know, dangling the carrot and then they're sort of taking it away again. You know, so it's the, the longest launch of two motorcycles I've ever known. But there we go. Right, uh, so as I say, you know, this week I've gone into the uh, dealerships. Uh, Philip, hello, how are you? Uh, nice to have you here. And thank you for all your comments as well on the videos as well. Thanks for that. Really great to you have your comments and good. Uh, really good. Really great engagement from all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, no, I should get Eric Buell back on board. If the, uh, I'd want them to see, sorry get back on board uh, if they want to see how to build a muscle bike. Well, well that's interesting. I mean, there was lots of talk that, you know, uh, not Buell would be coming in back into Harley-Davidson, but there would be some kind of a re-emergence of them. But I think Eric Buell and his company have gone into the electric cycles uh, market predominantly now. I could be wrong, but I think that's where their mind is at right now. Uh, and I think maybe they're looking at to just electric electrification more than coming back into any kind of uh, bikes. But but I completely agree. They, their biggest mistake, Harley Davidson, was was what happened with Eric Buell, you know, and, and Buell motorcycles. Just think of how that could have developed over the years. How they could have developed that over the years if they'd had the ability to back it a little bit. Just think, you could have a whole new section of bikes of Harleys, of Eric Buell bikes, 
but it's almost like you got Harley Cruiser and you got Harley Sports. You know, you, you almost like have two divisions. You almost got two companies, but under the same banner. If you want to talk about many more roads to, you know, Harley Davidson, well, they had it and they threw it away. You know, I mean, and that that's the key, isn't it? They had it and they threw it away. Uh, but obviously, it didn't work out for Eric Buell and his own company there. You know, it didn't quite work out, but. Missed opportunities there. I think definitely missed opportunities. But anyway, yeah, so if you've been watching the videos recently uh, this week, I've uh, put out a lot. I've put out a lot of content, I know. And, you know, sometimes I wonder if it's, it's too much, really. But, uh, you know, I, I like to try and give as much news out uh, as possible and produce as much content as I can. Uh, but I've been lucky enough to go to a couple of dealerships this week and try to get behind the scenes a little bit as well. Um, certainly at the Reading Harley Davidson dealership was able to have an extensive Q&A session uh, with uh, the sales manager there, James, also from uh, Guildford Harley Davidson dealership, Mike Noble. Uh, he was uh, able to sort of have a little chat with us as well. <coughs> I had a chat with him off camera afterwards as well. So it's, it's, it's a good start. It's a good start. It's a good start to talk to these dealerships and start asking proper questions. The, qu the questions that people are always asking, the, the questions that, you know, we, the issues that we have or anybody has and you kind of want an answer or you want at least one dealership's answer uh, to it, what they're doing about it, what their thoughts are. You can't speak for all Harley Davidson dealerships, of course, you know. And what I would say to this, I think I had a couple of comments this week that, you know, people say, well, their dealerships are really anti-customers or they're not very good to their customers or anything. I say, look, it always comes down to personalities, doesn't it? It comes down to individuals in a dealership, whether it's a Harley-Davidson dealership, whether it's a Triumph, a BMG, whatever. It really depends. You can get really nice people, really accommodating, really engaging people, or you can get very arrogant people who are just not very friendly as well, who just don't really want you there. It would appear. Uh, so... You know, I'm sure there's a lot of that going on. And I suppose depending on where you are in the world, you know, they would uh, either be more embracing uh, or quite standoffish. You know, it's one of those things. But look, I think it's really good to get in there and ask quite a few questions. I've, I've got uh, clearance from both dealerships so far um, to do a lot more filming. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, well, I, I would like to get to more dealerships and speak to them directly and have more Q&A sessions and, you know, try and get more of a, a broader view, uh, as it were. Um, but, you know, it's, it's um, I, I think so far, just to answer some of these questions, I think it's a good thing. I'm going to be doing a lot more interviews uh, with uh, normal riders, you know, out there on the Oh My Harley series as well. Been doing quite a bit more filming of that recently. Got a few more interviews lined up as well over the next uh, coming weeks. Uh, and then uh, as the season starts opening up, I'm hoping that I'll be able to meet more and more people over the, uh, over the coming weeks at events, at shows, at dealerships as well. And we can just have a bit of fun with it and uh, just keep on going, you know. Uh, Paul, right, yes, Chapman, Harley Davidson are brilliant. They treat you like part of the family, which is good, which is which is a nice, you know, it's always good to have a feeling. I know, you, you know, you get your, a lot of your work done at uh, Cheltenham, I believe, don't you? I think you bought your bike there as well, so that, that's good. Uh, I nearly went for the Pan America, nearly. Yeah. Oh. Do you know, I, it, you know, I would definitely want to ride that. But he, here's the thing, and, I, and, I t and I'll tell you what the, the problem is. Okay, so for me, if you're going to ride a Pan America, or go and test it, let's say, you've got to go and test it. So, they need to have a demo bike with a set of intermediate tyres, or, you know, part knobbly tyres, part on-road, part off-road tyres, and they need to get let you take it out uh, on the dirt. But let's face it, nobody's going to let you do that because of insurance. Nobody's going to want to let you take it off on some green lanes or some dirt tracks and, and put it through its paces. It's just not going to happen. Unless Harley Davidson, as a company, open up some experience center where you can actually go put these through their paces 
and, and, and see how that goes. But um, that's the only way. So what you're going to end up with is uh, just trying to, uh, you know, you're going to see these bikes in the dealerships and they probably have just normal road tires and you're just going to be giving it a normal road test as you would any other bike. Well, okay, which is fine, you know, but if you ever did want to take it off road, you want to try and use that experience. So, you know, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see if, uh, you know, any, any dealerships allow that. Right, here we go. Uh, Hepcat Harley. Hello again. Right, okay. Maybe an interview with some of the Harley technicians on site. The hours they work, the relations between them and then the pay scales, how work and weekends affect normal daily life. Look, that is, uh, it, there's going to be a lot more questions, a lot more videos coming up, uh, talking to lots of different uh, people within the dealership as well. That's the plan. That's the general idea. Certainly at Reading. So it really depends who's comfortable coming on video as well. We've got to, you can't really force this people. They've got to volunteer. Also, they, they you know, they're not going to say anything controversial. You, you can't expect that. So this is not going to be like some kind of expose of, you know, unearthing some scandal because it's never going to happen. Let's face it. I would like to, I would like to really get into the nitty gritty, but I think it's going to be more of a, of just good information rather than anything, you know, um, you know, earth shattering as it were. But I think definitely getting into the workshop, speaking to the technicians, certainly getting them to explain to us how long it gets them to train, what their kind of work like, are, you know, what, can they explain what they do for a PDI check, all that kind of stuff. I think it'd be really, really good. Uh, uh, Philip, here we go. Would be nice to see dealerships. Uh, uh, own up to bike problem and not say, oh, we haven't heard of that before. Even they are service statement on, and it, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I've heard this lots and lots of times and I mean, and this is what I was trying to get at as well with, you know, my questions already. So, well, and I know there's a parts problem. There is a parts problem, you know, uh, as they already said, they admitted there is a parts problem. There's an issue in the United States where they've, changing all their warehouses. I had a feeling there was a parts problem as well. Last October, November, when they, September, October, November, where the websites weren't really working very well. They used to have lots of, uh, of pricing on the uh, components, certainly for Europe, then that all disappeared. And a lot of the um, accessories disappeared as well. So um, yeah, so, you know, yeah, it, it will be good. I mean. Yeah, but, but they owned up to that, or not owned up to that, they were honest about the problems with the the parts. Um, but yeah, look, you, you speak to them and they think, well, they haven't heard it. You've got to take them at their word for it. I think what's more interesting is actually when they go back to the warranty department of Harley-Davidson, then the warranty department of Harley-Davidson, not within the dealership, this is actually in the company, then they say, oh, no, we've never heard of this before. And I said to the dealership uh, at one point when I had my issue with my yokes or triple trees, as they like to call them in the United States, you know, to say, well, actually, uh, you know, there's some marking here. I want these replaced on the warranty. And they're saying, well, the warranty department said they've never heard of it. I said, well, that's, that's a lie because I know three, three people uh, around the world who have uh, made uh, an issue of this and who have claimed on it. So, you know, yeah, I, there is a little bit of discrepancy there. I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, visiting sites near Hastings this year, so look out for uh, any of you guys out there for German plates and I'll buy uh, the coffee. Good man. Uh, Scoot, let me know when you're over and we will definitely meet up. We will definitely meet up, so yeah, and uh, I will definitely be looking out for German plates, no doubt. Uh, and uh, I do like my coffee, so you got yourself a, a coffee uh, date there. Uh, Paul, yes, I did buy the bike there. And I got uh, a few other things done there as well. I did get quotes through other Harley dealerships. So yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, look, I, I've got to say, as I said in my videos, I've been quite happy with the level of service uh, with my dealerships. But I've got to say, I'm one of those kind of people who will just keep on asking questions, making nuisance of myself. And if I'm not happy, I will go somewhere else. You know, so I make that sort of perfectly clear. Um, there we go. Yes, uh, if you drop it, <laughs> yeah, you pay for it. You're talking about the Pan American, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, I, I think that's that's the problem. That's the problem, isn't it? You want to test these bikes properly, 
but you kind of have to take it on sort of blind faith, really. So at some point, you're going to have to, you know, watch reviews. But if you're watching the videos, this is my point, right? Let me get back to the, 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 um, the, uh, the website here, right? This is my point. When you've got the, not, this, not that one, sorry, uh, Pan America. When you've got the images of the Pan America and it's studio stuff or just photo stuff, that's great because you're just showing off the bike. As soon as you show an action photos of it, look, look at the trail. It's all hard, compacted trails, right? This is rooster tails. This is just standing up here. Hard, compacted trails. I mean, look, I'd say anybody could ride that. That's not, that's not an issue within reason, okay? It's not that taxing. It's, look, it's all dry conditions as well. It's not that taxing. And, and the problem is, if, you, if you're trying to... If you're giving out the, the literature and the imagery of this, what this bike can do, then you kind of have to let the riders experience this as well before they buy it. Otherwise, you, you're just going on blind faith. You know, and it's it's a difficult one because I know most people, you know, who buy adventure bikes, they're never allowed to take them off road. Anyway, I'm not just saying this is a Harley thing. This is a bike experience thing in general. When I bought my Triumph, they weren't going to let me buy uh, take it off road. You know, I, or if you buy a BMW KTM, they're not, not going to let you do it. You know, but what you can do with the likes of BMW and Triumph, certainly over here in the UK. And I'm sure for KTM, they've got the same thing as well. Uh, you can, before you buy, let's say you can book yourself onto an off-road riding experience and go test them out for yourself under proper instruction, proper tuition. And I think if Harley-Davidson are definitely coming out with this Pan America, listen to me, Harley-Davidson. Listen to me, please, because I know what I'm talking about, okay? Open yourself up a rider experience, an off-road rider experience school, Okay? Do it and do it quickly. In each market that you're selling that bike, open one up because you're going to need it. You're going to need it. If you want to sell these bikes and you want people to have the proper experience of what they're like, train up some instructors and just get them out there. Start riding them. Anyway, that's that, that's me. Right, uh, let's come up here. Uh, do, 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 do. Here we go. Uh, right, uh, Scoot. Uh, any guys with in Germany? Uh, try Thunder Biking. In? Yeah. Um, Hamminkeln. Hamminkeln. Uh, cool bikes and friendly people. Yeah, I've seen the pictures that you sent, and some yeah, some and they do some great custom work as well, though, don't they? Yeah, some really nice, uh, really nice bikes. Yeah, so put them over, over there. Let's, you know, I can buy you a copy, yeah, Scoot. Uh, been to Linz at Guildford. A lovely ship. Yeah, that was, I mean that's where I was this week actually. The early part of the week, I was Monday, I was there. I was uh, speaking to, uh, doing an Oh My Harley video with Dave, my mate Dave. And I also had a quick tour. Like a, It was actually an impromptu tour around the uh, dealership. But also got us to speak to the sales manager. And we got the skinny on the live wire. And they've already got a couple of sales going. I, you know, it actually surprised me. Really surprised me of the sales. They've, they're they starting to sell the bike. You know, maybe it's not going to be the, the, the dodo that, you know, a lot of us think it would be. Maybe it's going to be a, a good one, you know. But they're selling bikes. They got pre-orders on it. You know what can you say? Can't say more than that. Uh, Paul, I hear that Charlie Borman and McGurr have done a few new series called Long Way Up using the live wire this time. I wonder how that will increase the sales when it finally goes to air. Yeah, look, I, they've had lots of help on that. They've had lots of. I, I think they're going to show the realities of it uh, in terms of, you know. I think what would be really interesting to see is how they actually did the on-route charging properly behind the scenes. Because they're claiming they just plugged it into people's houses as they were going along. Because if that's the case, you've got to work out the total distance, right? The total distance from South America up to wherever it was, Los Angeles, that they've uh, ridden their bikes to. And what, you know how many thousand miles that is and how long did it take them to do the trip? Because if you're only doing 100, 100 miles on a charge, let's say 120 miles maximum, then, then you need another eight hours to charge the bike up, whatever. That's pretty much your whole day gone. So or maybe you're doing a couple hundred miles a day maximum, right? So you know how long is that going to take you? I think it's taken a little bit longer than uh, three or four weeks that they did the filming. 
You know what I mean? So it'd be very interesting to see the real, the real way that they did that. And hopefully they will show that. But obviously they've been working in conjunction with uh, Harley Davidson and the like. But I think, I mean, by all accounts, they had a backup truck uh, with a, a, a fast charger on it. May, you know, may, maybe that, maybe they had a special generator charger on there as well for it. Possibly, possibly. Uh, right. Uh, uh, Re, uh, Re uh, UK six is the number plate. First three weeks in June now. Uh, any other guys? Uh, I'll even buy the donuts. Good man. Don't don't mention donuts in this group because I'll, I'll probably eat them. I need to go on a diet. I keep, I keep on saying I need to go on a diet, but you know. There we go. Oh, there we go. Um, what dealers are near Hastings? Um, Sykes. No, Sykes is on the way there, isn't it? Uh, but it's not. It's not Hastings. It's Lewes. Lewes or Lewis however you pronounce it, so it's down there. Hastings, there isn't, uh, there aren't any dealerships that, I'm just trying to think. No, that's it, that's it. You got Lewes, uh, so on the way to Hastings is uh, Lewes. Um, is uh, Sykes, sorry, Sykes Harley Davidson, that's about it. There's nothing further away. There are independent Harley dealerships or, or traders, let's say in Kent, all over Kent. Kent is quite a big Harley riding place, you know, clubs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but there we go, yeah. Um, from what I'm told, they took the fast charges with them. Yeah, I mean, that's what I heard as well. I think in, in the, some of the uh, newspaper reports and interviews they've given this week, or certainly Ewan McGregor has given this week, uh, saying that they, they kind of said, you know, they plugged it into people's houses and all that kind of stuff, and they were tripping fuses in people's houses. Yeah, as I say, let, let's see what the real uh, the real skin is on this. Mike, Mike Astray, hello, how are you? Thank you for joining. Uh, Alf, uh, are interest rates different in the neck of the woods than in the US? Um, we've got relatively low interest rates at the moment uh, as, as around the rest of the world, so pretty much pretty much the same I think uh, ours are we just pay more for them because we've got European tariffs on our the bikes that we get from Harley Davidson than than you, you've got that's why Harley Davidson are looking at uh, uh, moving a lot of their global sales of their bikes to the Thailand plant which is not subject to the tariffs uh, import taxes that uh, American produced bikes are as well so we'll still get the same bike, let's say a Sport Glide or a, I don't know, any kind of bike that come from Thailand as opposed to coming from America and we'll pay, we should pay less for it. But there we go. Yeah, uh, Lewis, it's R, uh, so L-E-W-E-S, Lewis, and it's Sykes Harley Davidson, that's S-Y-K-E-S, -E Sykes. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, wars. Yeah, wars in London. You got two in London. You got one in uh, Chelsea, Fulham area, and one in South West. Sorry, South East London, which is Nottingham. I think I believe it is. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So, so that's it. You know, but it's like you know, with, with the the Harley Davidson. You know, with the um, with the dealerships. I think it was great. It was great to get there. Great to have a good. Good old chat. I think it's really nice that I uh, got some good feedback on the videos. Yeah, I know that the views aren't that great. Fantastic. But some of the feedback has been really good. And uh, hopefully it can continue and just build up a bit of a name for itself and people can start. What, what I want to do is make sure that I remain independent. You know, there's a real risk because I've, I've contacted Harley Davidson. And I'll, I'll be completely honest with this. I've contact, contacted Harley Davidson quite a few times. The company this is. Quite a few times about developing a relationship, about you know, uh, doing videos uh, with the bikes and all that kind of stuff. Same with the dealerships. Now, all a couple of dealerships got in there to start speaking with them, but I don't want to be the mouthpiece of the company or of any dealership, okay? Because they can get their own people to do that, or they can, you know, have their own internal people to do that. This is more about showcasing from an independent point of view you know 
about a bike review or about your dealership experience or asking the questions that we really want answering. So it's not some PR guided exercise. It's really going to be more of a proper uh, independent view of it. Now, let's say, for example, if Harley Davidson as a company said to me, right, we'd like you to do a review of a particular bike. We'll sponsor the video. We'll pay you, you know, in peanuts and, you know, and lettuce leaves or something like that. Uh, and I'll say, yeah, okay, that's great. Yeah, we can come to some kind of financial arrangement. Then that video would be sponsored by that bike. However, if they try to put an exclusivity clause on any video or on any on my channel, for example, then it will be a game changer. It will be no. It will definitely be no because you can't have, you cannot be independent but still be exclusively tied to one particular company. Now, um, I know there are other YouTubers. I'm not going to mention his, <coughs> their name, their names, his uh, names. But they were, they fell foul of this. They fell foul of this in that they were exclusively tied to a particular manufacturer. Then the manufacturer wouldn't let them review anything else. As soon as he wanted to, uh, they wanted to review something else, all of a sudden they fell out of, the, the, they weren't allowed to have that exclusivity anymore. So, you know, the, the, the you know, it's, it's good to be independent, I think. You know, but still be respectful and all that kind of stuff. And obviously, you know, you're filming on their premises or in their headquarters and everything. Uh, you know, I, I treat it like I treat any other kind of uh, filming job or any other kind of interview or whether a written interview or a video interview. It's exactly the same, really. Still be respectful, but, you know, try and ask the questions that we want answered. But at the same time, you've got to see what they're comfortable in answering as well. Because they're under no obligation to give you any, well, they're not going to give you any secrets. They're not going to give you inside track on anything unless they want it known, unless they're trying to promote something. So a lot of stuff, you know, there'll be, you know, they give me something, then I give them something. They give me something, I give them something, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a balance in that, just to try and get some good information. But hopefully, the questions I've already asked are some of the questions that people wanted to answer already, you know. But there we go. Uh, I think the vlog has uh, come on good. I look forward to more. Never too old to learn. Wow, that's right. That's right. Oh, I, I can certainly vouch for that. Never too old to learn. Uh, yeah, I think the channel will start to grow big time. Well, thank you very much. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Uh, yeah, but so, you know, so, I mean, so that's, that's the basis of this series of videos. It's really getting to know people, getting to know you and I, riders, just normal riders, wherever, bikers, whatever term you want to call. And that's really the purpose of the Oh My Harley uh, series of videos. It's uh, speaking to other YouTubers who've got motorcycle channels, but also just normal riders who've got bikes. Um, and then any, anybody else, really. Then the dealerships is all about, again, getting to know people, sharing experiences, you know, um, dispelling myths, you know, answering questions or asking questions and trying to get answers. That's what it's about. Anyway, so uh, look, let's uh, let's talk about the uh, any latest news now uh, on uh, the Harley front, Harley Davidson front. Uh, oh, now I just want to say uh, first of all, if I just take you to the website here, let me just put this there. There we go. Is that right? There we go. Right, put this there. Right, so this is my website here, and I just want to show you something uh, here, right on the website. If you go right down the side there, uh, here. You've got all these uh, things, you can YouTube, uh, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can still subscribe to that uh, Coco Scope, which I've got uh, or most of the videos there up until recently. You get all the podcasts, you can get from SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes. But here, this is what I really want to talk about here. Um, so this is not about supporting me as a channel. This is about, uh, I'm raising money for charity for, for 2020. It's together for mental uh, well, uh, mental well-being, uh, National Association of Bicyclists with Disability, and British Biker Relief Fund. So if you click on this, you know, I'll just do that now. Sorry about the uh, internet here, and it goes to a Just Giving page. There's nothing on there right now, but you can see here there's some three charities which I'm uh, doing. They're all registered charities. They've got, I've put the charity numbers there as well. So it's together for mental well-being, National Association for Bikers with a Disability. British Biker Relief Foundation. Right. 
So let me just get rid of that now. Okay, so basically all that is, so if you, uh, in the future, in the live streams as well, if you, if any of you want to hit those super chats right at the bottom of the chat where you, you know, type in your chat, uh, then they will come up. Any money from that will go to uh, the charity. It will go to me first, eventually from you, uh, from uh, YouTube, but then it will go to the charity as well. Uh, and obviously you can still um, go onto the Coco Scope and become an adopter there. You can go onto the Patreon as well and uh, help uh, crowdfund there. Do the PayPal as well, even if you're all into that kind of stuff. But say, I'm still producing all this uh, content for free. For free, yes, that's right. I'm trying to produce as much as I can uh, and wherever I can. I've lost the chat here, by the way. Here we go. Yeah, uh, wherever, uh, whenever I can. I'm just trying to produce as much as I can for you guys uh, and, and different types of things. As I said a while ago, I'm going to try and produce varied content. I am still going to try and produce some technical videos on the... Um, on the soft tails on the sport glide um, but again it's one of those things if you you know if anybody has questions send them in and then I could either make a video about it you know so th those are really good things because you know sometimes you know it's stuff that I will never think about if somebody's asking a question no matter how simple it is to you or I let's say it means that somebody doesn't have that information out there so you know if you can make a video about it or explain it a little bit better Hopefully, uh, people get you know some good content out there as well. But anyway, um, in terms of latest Harley Davidson news, you saw my video the other day about uh, the, uh, the the latest stuff coming out. Uh, I mean, th there isn't really much to talk about apart from these two new bikes that they've you know come out: the uh, Fat Boy, the Black Fat Boy, if you like, and the um, the CVO Road Glide. Um, no, again, nothing really major. So the only other major thing, I suppose, from a news point of view, that they don't really want to own up to, is this parts thing, this parts fiasco, or if you will, this part, um, this delay in getting parts out. Uh, so that has been the thing. You know, I mean, it could be just a temporary. I'm sure it's going to be a temporary thing. It's, it can't go on forever, but it will be a temporary thing. Um, in terms of uh, issues with bikes, nothing really uh, out of the ordinary that I've heard uh, in the last week or so. Uh, it's all been pretty much standard stuff. As we know, a lot of the problems with the M8 engines have been pretty much rectified. Uh, so there isn't really uh, a big thing there uh, to discuss. There have been a few electronic issues. There have been a few infotainment issues, I believe, on some of the Taurus. Uh, but I haven't looked too much into that, so uh, that's just something that I'm, I'm hearing. Soft tails, nothing really, nothing uh, out of the ordinary happening. Um, but obviously here and in a lot of parts of the world, in the northern hemisphere especially, uh, we're hitting the, the um, big riding season is going to start opening up. A lot more people are going to be out on their bikes doing stuff, you know. So, uh, And I'll be uh, out and about a lot more trying to speak to a lot more people, doing a lot more Oh My Harleys and a lot more just interviews at dealerships and events and bike rallies and stuff like that as well. So hopefully, again, a lot more variation to, to the channel. I still want to do the weekly live streams, uh, the live shows as well. I still want to do podcasts as well. So, you know, there's lots of stuff. There. There's lots of stuff to do. Um, and, you know, I think somebody was asking me this week, you know, how do you do it all? How do you keep on producing all this content? Um, it's one of those things I just kind of, I've just got one of those minds that I just constantly churning over ideas. And as soon as I come up with uh, a, an idea, I want to get that information out. So if I can, and I know sometimes the, the videos can be quite simplistic. You know, they're, they're not a lot of production goes into them, I suppose you could, could argue. Uh, but do you know what? I mean, I, I want to produce, give information, get a clear message across. And, you know, and if that, hopefully that works, hopefully that works. But anyway, uh, there we go. Uh, Scoop, Harley do a lot of charity work, which is a noble thing. It can affect uh, all of us, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, look, look people do, so, I think that's what I'm going to try and get across with the dealerships as well. You know, there is a lot of misinformation, I suppose, or a lot of bad experiences that people have. And they try to, and it can sometimes appear that if somebody's saying, I've had a bad experience here with this dealership or my bike's had this problem, 
that it means that every bike is the same or every dealership is the same. And we know that's not the case. You could, we've got to have a balanced approach to this. We've got to have a balanced view to this. And I think the same, you know, same with the, the companies itself. You know, lots of people say, oh, they're a terrible company now. They just don't care about the riders, whatever. But at the same time, you've got to have a balanced approach where they're a business, but they also do lots of other good stuff as well. I think it'd be very interesting to see with this, with this year, 2020, and then into next year, 2021, how they're going to try and roll out this, this more experiences program for new riders to retain new riders. They've obviously got a lot of assistance for brand new riders to get their licenses and to buy their first ever, first ever Harley Davidson. That's probably going to be entry level Harley Davidson. It's like a sports 883 or, or a street, yeah, a street 750 or whatever. Um, you know, so it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how they how they roll out the program and what kind of experiences they they produce for new riders. As I say, if they are going to have day riders, uh, day experiences or weekend experiences, if they're going to come out with, especially with the Pan America, they, in my opinion, they need to open up an off-road riding school or off-road riding experience center for the Harley Davidson Pan America. And that's going to be the way to get people in, get people in and give them that um, experience. It's not only going to attract riders, existing Harley riders, onto the Pan America, but what it's going to do is going to take people who are adventure bike riders from other manufacturers, let them go and have a look at the Harley Davidson properly, and then also they can gather a lot of data, a lot of wealth of knowledge from existing riders who kind of ride these things all the time, take it there, and then they can share that experience. So again, if these training centers, these experience centers, a great data gathering places uh, for manufacturers so they should really they should really do that you know in my opinion think of doing a hack on my ape hangers a screen just for the motorway riding yeah look there's lots of there's lots of options there isn't there as well you know I, you know i'm always toying about getting a, a bigger screen or changing the fairing on my bike per se but i, I say i don't know it's, it's a, yeah, I mean, I think Mike, you're absolutely right. Go for it. It's good. You know, why not? You know, if, if, if it suits you, suits your riding, absolutely. Go then. I used to do uh, a born again school over here about three times a year. Okay, what what's that then? Is that just a, a road riding experience? Is it because they, um, now is that a new thing? Because I think, I said, so they're going to be right bringing out a lot more, a lot more uh, of these kind of programs over the next year or so. Uh, and you know, it's, it's definitely a big plan of theirs to, you know, retain a lot of riders. Because the thing is, they say that they've attracted 50,000 brand new riders, right? That's fine. So they've attracted actually over 520,000 new riders, but they've lost 470,000. So they've only made 50,000, but they've still lost 400, you know, 70 odd thousand. That's a, that's a that's a lot. That's a lot of you know. That's a lot of people to lose uh, from the Harley Davidson brand. So I think they're they're going to have to do something. They're going to have to do something to get people in. But part of me also is a bit a bit miffed at this kind of Harley Davidson idea of attracting new riders. But what about providing good experiences for existing riders? You know, stopping those people leaving. Stopping. You know, us older people saying, oh, I'm fed up with all the so I'm going to go off and buy a Suzuki or something. You know, why don't you start producing content and experiences for those on top of what anybody can get from a hog chapter or whatever, you know. Do something that, you know, and it's, it's you know, something like that. I think that's what they need to do. Right, anyway, so that's the latest news uh, from Harley Davidson. So not a great deal, really. So a few faults, a few issues coming out. It would appear from some of the tourists i don't think this is widespread this is some of it nothing massive on the soft tail uh, range uh, so far in terms of problems no obviously the, the company is still not really doing well financially their stock price took a bit of a hit again uh, this week um okay scoot uh, it's riding different bikes on a closed uh, then when confidence is built up yeah for the road yeah they do something similar like that over here as well a lot of the manufacturers are starting to do this kind of thing. I know Triumph have just done some kind of uh, new training experience. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, all of this is to sell bikes. Uh, you know, this, this is not just, uh, you know, it's about selling bikes, about keeping riders on the brand. It's a, it's a business strategy. I, I, you know, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, them older riders are not leaving. <laughs> to, well, okay, that's also, the, yeah, absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Uh, yeah, the, the, that's part of the reason why the 470,000 riders uh, have left, because there's a lot of them who just can't ride anymore for whatever reason. They're not all just leaving the brand and going to Triumph, for example. Some of them are because, you know, they're, um, they're dead or too old or too infirm to ride. That's, you know, that, that is true. Right, anyway, so hopefully a lot more Q&A sessions at the dealerships come in. A lot more videos, a lot more varied videos, a few more tech videos coming out soon as well. If you've got any questions about, uh, or you've got any ideas for videos as well, please send them in via the website. That'd be really good. Uh, and, uh, you know, as always, please like, share, subscribe, leave those comments. Uh, and uh, so check out the website, revelatoralf.com. Check out all the links on there as well. If you want to listen to me in the car, great, you want my dulcet tones in the car, you can download the podcast as well. So I'll be doing a lot more of those in the coming weeks. Uh, so, you know, all, all the Oh My Harleys are on the, on the podcast as well. So go check those out. Right. Uh, but anyway, I think that's it for for this one. Well, we've done, what, just over an hour. But I say, if, uh, if there's any, uh, any other questions, otherwise, I will bid you a fond uh, farewell. And uh, I will do my newspaper newsreader kind of stuff there we go and uh right anyway that's it yeah go enjoy your sunday lunch why not and uh so i'm just gonna try and well i think i'm gonna stay indoors today because we've got gale force winds here in the uk not very nice at all but anyway look uh that's uh the harley talk live for this uh, sunday lunchtime i uh, hope you enjoyed that and i catch you again lots more videos coming well a couple more videos coming today and all this week and well uh, until the end of the month, definitely, and some, would you believe, even until April. That's how far ahead I am, even until April. Right, anyway, thanks for that, and I will catch you again very, very soon. Cheers. Thanks for everybody for joining in the chat today. Thanks for everybody for leaving comments afterwards. I'll thank you in advance. So, catch you again.